the first step to creating a shop in Minecraft is going to be importing the required Node.js packages. Head over to the first link in the description and click on versions. Side of here, you can see all of the versions of the server packages. Find the newest stable release and click on it. From here, click on the npm import right here and copy it. Now inside of Visual Studio, open the new terminal and then paste the import into here. Once it says it's installed the packages, head over to the second link in the description and do the same thing for the server UI package. In my case, the latest version did not work, so I just imported the next stable version. Now that the node modules have been added, we need to import the action form data from the server UI. Now we can get started scripting. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new function called openFORM and make it take in a player. It's important to note that in JavaScript, you cannot define variables the same way as in TypeScript or most other languages, and that causes Visual Studio to not have any auto-completions. To fix this, just type this before the name of your variable and change the type to whatever variable you want it to be. To create a form, we need to create a new variable and set it equal to a new action form data. With the new form created, we can call form.title and then pass in whatever title you want. I'm just going to call mine test form. Now on a new line, we can call form.body and this is going to be the description that pops up under the form's title. I'm just going to say, this is the first sentence to the form. Now for the fun part. We need to make a button and doing the same steps as before we can call form.button and this one takes in two variables. A string for the button text and a string for the custom icon path. For this button I'll just be leaving the path empty. To display the form in game all you have to do is call form.show and pass in the player. Now that we have the open form function finished we need to use an event to trigger this function. In my case I just want it to open when the player right clicks with a book so I'll just use the item use after event. Since I only want the function to run when a book is clicked, I can just make an if statement and inside of it check if event.itemstack.typeid is equal to minecraft colon book. If this returns true, then we can just call open form and pass in the event.source as the player. Now we can test the script. Go ahead and open minecraft and make a new world with the behavior pack and make sure to enable beta APIs in the experiments list. With the world open, we can right click when holding a book and a form now opens. But if you click the button and nothing happens, that's that's because we need to check which button is selected and run some code based on that option. To do this, let's go back to Visual Studio and add dot then after form dot show. Then we can name the event response. Because the buttons are an array, the first index will always start at zero. So to check if we press the first button, we can make an if statement and check if the response dot selection is equal to zero. If it does, then we can run whatever code we want. For now, let's send a message in the chat. To do this, we can just say world dot send message and pass in the message. Now let's add an icon for the button. To do this, all you need to do is create a textures folder in your resource pack and then make another folder inside of textures called UI. Inside of this folder, you can add any image you want. Now back to the script, we can type the path of the button after the button name. In this example, it will be textures slash UI slash pack icon dot PNG. Now you should have an icon for your button. Next, I want to create a shop. To do this, let's create a new function called purchase item. And before we set up this function, we actually need some variables to use for our items. So at the top of the script, let's make a new class called shop item and inside we can declare a few variables for our items. Let's go ahead and use a name for the text on the button, a price for the item, and a type ID for an item that we'll be buying. Now so that we can create a new shop item we have to make a constructor that takes in a name, a price, and a type ID. Inside of the constructor we can just set this.name is equal to name, this.price is equal to price, and this.type ID is equal to type ID. Now to create a new shop item all you have to do is create a constant variable and call it whatever you would like and set it equal to a new shop item. Now you just have to pass in the variables we list in the constructor. First, you pass in the name, then the price, and then the type ID. To make it easier to create all the buttons, we can make a new constant variable that will be an array of all the shop items we just made. So I'll just call this shop items and set it equal to an array and pass in all of the shop items. Now back to the purchase item function, we can pass in an index for the selected button and also a player. To be able to keep track of the player's money, we are going to need to use the scoreboard in game. So at the top, we can set a new constant variable called scoreboard name and set it equal to our scoreboard's name. I'll just call it money. Now we also need to create a variable for our objective. And I'll just call this one objective. Now inside of our world initialize after event, we can set objective equal to world.scoreboard.getObjective and then pass in the scoreboard name. Now just in case the scoreboard doesn't exist, 
we need to use an if statement to say exclamation mark objective, which basically just means does objective not equal anything. Then if the objective does not exist, we can set objective equal to world.scoreboard.add objective and then pass in the scoreboard name. Now that we have a scoreboard to keep track of each player's currency, we can go into our purchase item function and check if the player's money is greater than or equal to the shop item's price. To do so, just say objective.getScore, then pass in the player, then the greater than sign, followed by an equal sign, then shop item with the index of index dot price. If this returns true, then the player has enough money, so we can subtract the money from the player by using objective.setScore, and then passing in the player and objective.getScore, and passing the player into this as well, minus shop items with the index of index dot price. Then to give the player an item, we can use player.run command, which will just run a regular command in Minecraft. So we can say give at s, which means at self, and since we are running this on the player, at s will just be that specific player. And then we can add shop items with the index of index dot type ID. Now just make sure that in the open shop function in the form dot show, you run the purchase item function and pass in response dot selection for the index and player for the player. The last thing we need to do is create the buttons and to do this we can actually create them dynamically by using a for loop. To do this all we have to do is type in for and then let i equal zero and whenever i is less than shop items dot length i plus plus. This is making a new variable called i and setting it equal to zero and for as long as i is less than the number of shop items, it will add 1 to i. Everything inside of this for loop will run every time that i increments by 1. So this will run for as many items we have inside of shop items. Now inside of the for loop, we can just say form, then on a new line we could say form.button and then pass in shop items with the index of i.name. And if you want to, you can also add the price just like this. Now this would technically work, but the player score by default is not actually 0 and it's actually null, which means the code would most likely throw an error. So to fix that, we need to initialize each new player when they join the game by setting their money to zero. To do this, we need to use system.runInterval, which just runs all code on a set interval with a given speed in ticks, and 20 ticks is one second in Minecraft. So towards the top, we can call system.runInterval, and then just initialize it like this. Then inside of here, we can get a list of all the players that haven't been initialized by making a new variable called players and setting it equal to world.getPlayers. And as you can see, we can actually specify entity queries, and so so to be getting the players that have not been initialized already, we can use the exclude tags query. So inside of some squiggly brackets, type exclude tags, and this will be equal to an array of tags. In our case, we just want one tag, so you can call this anything, but I'm just going to call it has joined before. Now this is going to return a list of players that don't have this tag, which means we can just loop through all of these players and then set their scores and give them the tag. To do this, we can say players.foreach, and then we can name a new variable called player, and then initialize the for each loop just like this. Inside of the for each loop, we can say objective.setScore and pass in the player and zero for the score. Then we need to add the tag to the players so the money doesn't keep getting reset constantly. To do this, all you have to do is do player.addTag and then use the same tag we just used above. Now you can just save the code, refresh the project and bridge, and reload the world in Minecraft. Now if we give our player some money by using this command, we can now open the shop and buy items.